And this is breaking news. NBC News now projects Raphael Warnock as the winner in the special Georgia Senate election tonight. Raphael Warnock, the projected winner, beating incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler with a, at this point, 36,000 vote margin. The votes are still uh, now up to 40,000. The votes are still being counted in Georgia. Raphael Warnock is building that lead. Let's go straight to Steve Kornacki at the big board with the latest numbers. Steve Kornacki, what do we have? All right, Lauren. So what just happened that caused this race to be called for Raphael Warnock? And you can see the official call on our screen. We got another batch of votes from DeKalb County. We've been talking about DeKalb County. We didn't get all of the outstanding vote, but we got about 6,000 more votes. Remember, there were about 18,000 outstanding, so about a third of the remaining vote in DeKalb County. Overwhelmingly de uh, de Democratic DeKalb County just came in. Warnock won 91 percent of the new vote that just came in, so extremely Democratic vote that just came in. That what that does to Warnock's lead statewide is it pushes it over 40,000. It pushes it to a full point. Again, still more than 10,000 votes to come in DeKalb County. You can see the dramatic effect that these updates from DeKalb County are having. So Warnock still, there is vote to come from DeKalb County that, could, that will push that lead out further for him. There is still, as we said, 7,500 mail ballots to come from Fulton County. We expect that to also benefit Warnock, potentially votes in Chatham County, Savannah, the opportunity for him to build that lead north of 50,000. And putting it into a place, Lawrence, we were talking about this a little earlier, the decision desk is looking for, you know, does a candidate get to a place where there just is no realistic way that the opponent, the trailing candidate, can get back in it? And Warnock is putting this race in a position now where there's not a realistic path for Kelly Leffler, and also he's clear, critically, 50.5 to 49.5, a full point ahead. He seems clear right now of that 0.5% threshold that could trigger a, a runoff. If the margin between these two candidates was a half a point or less, that's recount territory. It's a full point and again, growing. It's a full point and growing. All right, Travers, thank you so much for that. Still standing by for the latest results there. Taking a look at the second big race for today, the 5th Congressional District seat, Julie Letlow. Julia Letlow there has been declared the winner. You can see she has 65% of the votes. Julia Letlow is the widow of Luke Letlow, who won the seat but died about three months ago from COVID-19 complications. Let's head over now to Sherman DeSalle, who's live in a meet with the latest there. Sherman? Yes, Sella, the seat that was once taken by the late Congressman Luke Letlow is now being secured by his wife, Julia, and it was a dream of hers to do this and to start the work that she knew her husband was, she said, was going to start once he was elected. Take a look at the numbers that we've been paying attention to tonight. Since the polls closed earlier tonight, it was very clear that Julia Letlow was dominating. This Republican from Rayville was taking over 60% of the votes the minute the polls started to close. Alexandria candidate Candy Kristoff lagged behind at 30%. Now, since Letlow announced her intentions to run for her late husband's seat, she was heavily endorsed by the GOP establishment on a state and federal level. That includes the former congressman for that district, Ralph Abraham, as well as former President Trump and Donald Trump Jr. Been seeing a lot of those endorsements on social media tonight. Uh, a lot of things that she plans on doing, according to her, her website, is fixing the infrastructure, also supporting teachers and public workers, public employees, supporting veterans, active military, police and first responders, tackling rural development. As you may know, the 5th District is one of the poorest districts, the congressional districts, not just in Louisiana, but in the country. She says that she is going to be taking a hard look at all the things that could be done in that seat. Again, she's from Rayville, another part of the area that's seen a lot of uh, a lot of depletion throughout the years because, again, it's a pretty poor uh, district when you look at all the congressional maps and it's a very vast congressional map. We're talking about from North Louisiana all the way to where we are in a meet. Clearly the voters wanted Julia Letlow, the wife of the late Congressman Luke Letlow to take this seat and that's exactly what she got. Reporting from a meet Sherman DeSalle, WDSU News. Uh, right now we're going to go back.
Yes, we can call the second congressional district race for Troy Carter. I've been hinting at this all night. I just wanted to see a few more votes come in, especially from Orleans Parish. And we haven't even gotten votes yet from Algiers, which is Troy Carter's base. He's going to come out of Algiers, which is a significant tranche of voters with a big lead. And he's already got a big lead elsewhere when you add up all the other parishes. So we're going to call this now for Troy Carter. It, it, right now, he's ahead at 56 percent. We've still got a lot of votes on the East Bank of Orleans to count, as well as votes from Algiers. And I think Carter Peterson will narrow it, but not en there's not enough votes out. Uh, for her to uh, to close this gap. He's ahead by uh, close to 8,000 votes right now. And it's, I just don't see this thing closing up when the rest of the votes come in. So we're going to call this for Troy Carter. And I think we already called the, the vote uh, in Jefferson Parish in that state rep race where uh, Laurie Schlegel has narrowly defeated Eddie Connick to become the new state representative from Jefferson Parish. All right, and I, I want to I ask you, Clancy, we talked a lot about how you were waiting for a lot of those votes from, from Orleans Parish to come in, but what part of the district do you think really won this race for him? Was it the kind of East Baton Rouge area or was it the Orleans Parish area? Actually, it was all parts. He, he's carrying every parish except East Baton Rouge, and he's doing, he's doing pretty well in East Baton Rouge, considering Karen Carter-Peterson finished first in East Baton Rouge in the primary, and Gary Chambers finished second. Troy Carter ran third in East Baton Rouge, but when you look at the vote that Carter-Peterson, that Peterson got and Chambers got in the primary, uh, compared to what Carter got in the primary, he improved his position, his share of the vote significantly from the primary in East Baton Rouge Parish, still lost it, but Peterson just didn't build on Chambers' uh, uh, endorsement. Uh, so I think the endorsement by Chambers, uh, who you know, ran second in his home parish, did better in Orleans than anywhere else. And I think the big chambers vote in Orleans is yet to be counted. I think it's going to get narrower, but it, I don't see any way that Peterson can overcome the deficit that we're already seeing. Democrat Melanie Stansberry is headed to Washington to represent the Albuquerque area in Congress. As you can see, Stansberry's victory was a landslide over Republican Mark Boers, who is trailing by 24 points. It only took about an hour after the polls closed to call the selection. And that meant the party started early at the Hotel Albuquerque, where the Democrats were camped out tonight. That's where News 13's Annalisa Pardo joins us live. Annalisa? Jess and Dean, you can see supporters are still out here celebrating. Now we talked to the newly elected Congresswoman tonight. She hopes her victory is a sign for the election next year. It's just such an important victory to our state, to our communities, and to our country. I'm just so proud. Stansbury is the first Democrat elected to Congress in a special election in New Mexico. Democratic leaders who spoke tonight say this win reflects how President Biden and Democrats on the national level are doing. Stansbury shared her priorities for her new role. The number one priority is the economy and getting New Mexicans back to work. You know, I think everyone is struggling right now in terms of coming out of the pandemic, but we also need to be addressing some of the systemic issues in our community, like hunger and homelessness and, you know, investing in education and infrastructure and addressing environmental issues. So all of those things are important, but right now the economy is front and center. Stansbury is a two-term state rep whose district covers parts of the Heights. Before her time in the Roundhouse, Stansbury worked in community development and has a background in natural resources and science issues like water security. And she says tonight she will celebrate and start work for her new role tomorrow. She also says she'll likely be heading to Washington in a couple of weeks. Back to you. All right, Annalisa, thank you. Democrats have now won eight elections in a row in Congressional District 1 with the average margin of victory at about 18 points. Turnout for today's election was low, hitting about 29 percent. Our political analyst Gabe Sanchez joined us earlier tonight from out of state to break down tonight's race. Gabe, really no surprises here tonight in an area where 60 percent of the vote went to Biden back in November. What's it going to take for Republicans to win this area? Absolutely no surprise. Melanie Stansbury, our new congresswoman from the Albuquerque District in New Mexico. I think the only thing that's really going to change the outcome here for Republicans is redistricting. Obviously, we're coming up on a redistricting cycle, and one of the things we look for is competitiveness. That's one of the criteria for redistricting. So there's a possibility you could move some Democrats out of this district, maybe down south. Uh, the challenge is for Republicans, if you do that, 
they, that makes this more competitive for Republicans, but that might decrease the likelihood that they have a safe competitive advantage down south. But I really see that as really being the only likelihood of making this a more competitive district for Republicans at this point. And Gabe, while it was an easy win for Democrats tonight, House Democrats didn't want to take any chances tonight. They poured in $100,000 compared to House Republicans, who only gave Mark Moore 7000 How worried are Democrats about keeping their majority, and what does this race say for midterm races? Well, I think the money that came in for Stansbury indicates Democrats didn't want to leave anything to chance, keep their advantage, not give up any seats, and really not make this even competitive. Um, I think what it tells us about the big picture is Democrats are going to be all in when it comes to the, the next round of, of election cycles. But I don't think this district tells us a whole lot about the national picture. As noted, this range is about 18 percent average the last few cycles for Democrats. So it doesn't really give us a crystal ball outlook of what things might look like in 2022. But I think it gives us some indication that Democrats are going to pour money into these districts even when they're not competitive. Gabe, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. First tonight on this uh, evening here, a big political night, massive political upset here in North Texas. Good evening. I'm Doug Dunbar. Political reporter Jack Fake has been following the election between Jake Elsey and Susan Wright through this night. And the outcome, not the one a lot of people expected, Jack. Well, Doug, Jake Elsey surprised a lot of people. He not only won, but he led all night long. Many analysts thought Susan Wright would win. She had the support of former President Donald Trump and many Republican leaders in Tarrant County. Elsey won 53 percent of the vote to Wright's 47 percent. He not only won his home turf of Ellis County, where he's a first-term state representative, but also in Tarrant County, Wright's home base, where she's been active in Republican Party politics, separate from her husband, the late Congressman Ron Wright, who died earlier this year after testing positive for COVID-19 and battling cancer. As you would expect, Elsie's watch party in Ennis was very upbeat all night long. He says he's ecstatic and that he received a very gracious phone call from Wright, who conceded the race. Governor Greg Abbott has congratulated Elsie on his victory. For now, Elsie says he's focused on being sworn in, national security, and reuniting the country. Former President Donald Trump held a tele-town hall for Wright just last night, while former Governor Rick Perry had endorsed Elsie. Elsie was asked about the impact of the endorsements. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the candidates who are going to be standing on the floor of the House of Representatives. And uh, that comes down to the candidates and the, the kind of the campaigns that they run. Both Elsey and Wright are Republicans. So one thing that will be studied now is how much of an impact did Democrats play in this race. Elsey will complete this term in the seat, but Republicans and Democrats will gear up for the 2022 election. The primaries are scheduled for March for now. In the meantime, there will have to be a special election for Elsie's seat in the State House. The governor will call that very soon. Doug. Welcome back to our special election night coverage here on MSNBC. We do have a call. This is a uh, congressional election in Ohio. This is a Cleveland area district, a very blue district. This was opened up by Marsha Fudge being confirmed to President Biden's cabinet as HUD secretary tonight. Democrat Chantel Brown has beaten the Republican candidate Laverne Gore. Again, NBC News just making that projection in Ohio's 11th congressional district. Congratulations to the congressional. Congratulations to the Congresswoman-elect Chantel Brown in Ohio. It is just about 9.30 on the East Coast right now. We do have a projection to make. This is the Ohio 15th Congressional District. This is a seat that was vacated in May, a surprise resignation from a moderate Republican congressman named Steve Stivers. Uh, racing uh, tonight, or running tonight to succeed Steve Stivers, Republican Mike Carey and Democrat St Democratic State Representative Allison Russo. There was a late endorsement for Russo from President Biden in this race, but this is a, a fairly heavily Republican District. This is a district that Trump won by 14 plus points. And